Hey guys, this is Dan. Thanks for coming to the shop today. Well, the weather's starting to turn, and right now it is snowing here in upstate New York. So, I have decided that it's time for me to make a snowplow for my tractor. When I first started looking for a snowplow, I wasn't sure what I wanted. Uh, at first, when I started looking, I was thinking maybe a car plow would be best. One for a pickup truck, small SUV, something like that. I finally settled on an ATV plow. It's, I believe, five foot plow uh, from a Polaris. I picked it up at a uh, four-wheeler shop here uh, locally, and I only paid 200 bucks for it. And so far, I'm spent thirty dollars on a chain binder and another forty dollars on uh, random steel uh, from a local welding shop. So. I am going to start modifying this plow to fit my Yanmar tractor. So if you would like to continue watching, you can see what I'm doing. This is the Polaris plow that I bought for the tractor. I paid $200 for this plow. It's got a good air deflector on the front of it here. It's got a really good cutting edge on it. The paint on the plow, even though it's dirty, it's hard to see, is still nice and glossy. No big scratches or rust on it. And most importantly for me, it has these plow shoes right here. Uh, plow shoes keep me from tearing up the gravel. It's got a trip edge on it, so if I hit something solid, it will tip forward. And one of the big things I was looking at when I was doing this was the manual adjust lever here. I can manually angle it back and forth. I don't have to worry about hydraulics uh, and everything else at this point in time. If later I want to uh, modify it, I can. I can take that lever off, but for now that's going to work for me. That chain that you see right there, right there, is going to be coming off. That's used for uh, ATV winches uh, to raise and lower the plow. I have a bucket on my Yanmar tractor, so I don't need to worry about raising and lowering uh, the plow. I'll be using the uh, lift frame for the tractor. Now, what I've done is I've measured the bottom of the bucket from the front of the cutting edge to the back angle on the bucket. The bucket's 48 inches wide by 17 inches to the from the front cutting edge to the back angle. Now, I measured from here where the front angle iron I'm going to be welding on is going to be that hooks the front cutting edge back to here, and that's going to be the 17 inches. Now, on the back of this, I'm going to be welding a piece of 2-inch tubular steel and running a chain through it. So I'm going to need to cut this off here at the mark on the left-hand side. But I, I don't need the rest of the plow frame. plow frame is for ATV and I am modifying this. So, I'm going to get to it, and when I'm done cutting it, I'll be back and show you what I got. Alright guys, there you have it. I've got the plow frame cut to where I need it. Now, I'm going to be getting the tubular and everything lined up and prepping the metal to weld everything up where I want it. Bear with me, I'll be back. Alright guys, before doing this part, you want to make sure you have eye protection on and ear protection, which as you can see, I already have. So I'm going to go ahead and get started grinding down the paint to prep this for welding. Alright guys, now that I'm done grinding these off, I have got my piece of 2 inch tubular and I've taken it and I've marked the halfway point on it. Halfway point is dead center. Now this was already the length that I needed it from the welding shop so it worked out perfect for me. I've gone and cleaned up the ends, just get the burrs off that were already on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and lay it up here on top. Just like so. Got my tape measure here. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting this centered on here and marked so when I go to weld it, if it moves, I'll know. Otherwise, it's a guessing game. So I'm going to measure the outside of the frame from here to here 
to see how long it is. It is 13 inches. Now, 13 inches divided by 2 is 6.5. So the halfway point on this plow frame is 6.5 inches. So I got to line up the line that I made on the 2 inch tubular to 6.5, which is actually pretty close. Right there. So that's the center. Now I'm going to take my chalk. Chalk. I'm going to mark the outsides of these on the two inch. And then I'm going to mark the insides. Now what this piece here is, this is going to be the piece that my piece of chain that I'm going to use to attach this whole assembly to my bucket on my tractor is going to go through. It's going to go through here, up and over the bucket, and attach to the front with chain binder. Uh, and cinch the whole thing up to the bucket, so I don't actually have to take the bucket off my tractor every time that I want to go out and plow snow, and this can easily come off. So, I'm going to get to setting up the welder and bring you guys back when I have it ready. Alright, so now I'm ready to start welding up. I've got the pieces all mocked up here. I got them set where I need them. I got them braced. As you can see, I got my lines all lined up. And I've remeasured just to be sure that I have everything the way I need it to be. Now I'm going to turn the welder on and start welding. Uh, first I'm going to start, I'm going to do a couple spot welds, get it so that the two inch tubular is tacked in place. And then I'm going to really start going to town. So bear with me. Alright guys, now that I got this tack into place, I'm going to go and uh, get it welded in uh, all the way around the tubes from the plow frame to the 2 inch tubular. So here it goes. Alright guys, I had my heat turned up a little bit too high, uh, so that's what you saw me doing over adjusting the machine. I was having to turn my heat down a little bit. I was burning right through the metal. No, it wasn't welding, it was burning it. So, I have a couple of spots I have to go and touch up, and then we're going to go on to the next step. Alright, welding on the piece of 2 inch tubular for the back of the plow frame is done. Now I'm moving on to the front. Now, this is going to be the support for the front of the uh, bucket. 
I'm going to be welding a piece of angle to this to make a hook so that the cutting blade will slide up into it and support the front of the bucket. But this is going to be the support that holds everything across the front. I'm making this half an inch wider on both sides of the bucket, so one inch overall. Uh, so it sticks out beyond the sides of the bucket so it doesn't have a tendency to try to push in if I hit something solid. So I'm going to get this cut and I'll be back. Nice clean cut. Got all the burrs off it. All set and ready to go. Alright guys, here we go again. On the front side of this, we have to measure the piece of 1 inch tubular that we just cut and uh, mark the halfway point. We, like I said before, we cut it at 49 inches, so half of 49 inches is going to be what? 24 and a half inches. So, measure twice, cut once. We've got 49 inches. Brings us at 24 and a half inches, right there. Now, that's the halfway mark on our piece of one inch tubular. Now we're gonna measure the distance on the outside of the frame. Outside to outside, looks like we're at nine inches. So half of nine inches is four and a half inches. Four and a half. All right, we got it set in place where we want it. Now to mark it. Okay, now we got that marked. Now we're going to take the piece of angle that I'm welding to the front of that, and we're going to set that on there too. That is just a hair less than 48 inches, so it fits into the bucket nice and, nice and evenly. So now, as the bucket slides under here, it'll rest on top of the frame. When it's resting on top of the frame, the chains come up and over top of the bucket, and there'll be U-bolts welded onto this, this assembly right here. So a chain will hook to that over the bucket, through the tube, over the other side, and hook to the other side of the front with a chain binder. So this is where we're going with this. Now I have to take the paint off of the uh, original plow frame so I can weld this piece of one inch tubular to it and get a good clean weld. So I'm going to be setting up for that and I'll be back. Alright guys, I'm ready to start grinding. Uh, again, I want to stress the importance of eye protection and ear protection for doing this because it can be quite loud. And you won't appreciate the hearing protection or the eye protection until it saves your eyes or ears. And after that happens, then you really appreciate it and you want to make sure everybody else knows. So, here we go.